My name is Josh, and for 24 hours, I was an international meth dealer. The first thing I remember is seeing his mugshot. It didn't quite feel real, you know, but it was still something where I was like, I can't believe what he's gotten himself into. This is my friend. He's a great guy, I think. Neighbors tell 10TV they never noticed anything suspicious about this house, but police say it was a meth lab and stash house. In everybody else's minds, I mean, this is as real as it could be. But none of it was true. It was all a prank. Like, oh my God, oh my God, this is crazy. I can't believe he did this. You know, I can't believe he did this to his mother. When you start something like that, you don't realize what the fallout is going to be. They moved in with lawyers pretty quick. I would have died. I mean, that's unbelievable. That's a serious case you got against yourself, man. This prank got way bigger than I could have ever imagined. Infected way more people than it should have. My feelings were just very mixed on being proud and also I'm in trouble. Growing up, I was always huge in the science and tinkering with things. I got a chemistry set, Legos when I was smaller than that. I was always a smart one, the one that really liked math and science for the fun. And I was also always a good kid. I never got in that much trouble. Eventually, I did go to school for electrical engineering. I worked at a local utility as a control systems engineer for a while. Just wasn't really fitting me 100%, so I decided to up and leave. And my perspective was I'm taking a year off of everything and just live off of my savings for a bit, getting more into music and film, just see where life was going to take me next. Josh is my first nephew. When Josh left the power company, we all, our whole family, pretty much wondered what was going on with him. Where did he go? What is, what's he doing now with his time? He's quitting there to, to, to work in a band, you know, or to to do video stuff? Okay. Maybe it's a phase, you know, how people always go through phases in their life. When I left my nine to five, you know, people did wonder, well, what is he gonna do next? How is he gonna make ends meet? As the years went on, people just assumed like, well, maybe maybe he's doing something else. Like maybe he's selling drugs or something. And it kind of became a running joke. We had been over Josh's house all the time, but I never really knew what he was doing for money. Me and Josh are both huge fans of Breaking Bad. And he was always making the jokes of like, yeah, maybe one day I'll become the new Heisenberg. He had a lot of that scientific background, and so it kind of made sense. And the basement was just somewhere we never go. It was kind of always blocked off. He'd still be making those jokes like, oh yeah, well that's where I've got all the chemicals stashed down there. Got everything cooking down in my basement. It fits so well. A lot of my friends by this point had just constantly made this joke about me having a meth lab. The ultimate goal of this prank, contrary to where it did end up, it was more or less to satisfy an inside joke that had been going on for a number of years. It was never meant to be anything more than that. In order to pull off this prank, it needed to be as authentic as possible. So the initial incarnation of the prank was to post a fake news article of me getting busted for having a meth lab. I went and actually bought the domain, wbns10news.com. The real one is 10tv.com. From there, I went to the actual 10TV website to gather the source code and all the images and assets from the actual website. And the idea is that it would look precisely identical, re-edited by me, to you know, have my own little story in there and everything. I actually downloaded the introduction from the newscasters talking about drug busts here in Columbus they would be referring to as a big drug bust. And the idea is that that's when it transitioned into the shots of my house, shots of the drugs. That was all put together from just random things I had laying around. I had a childhood chemistry set of like little beakers and tubes. For the mug shot, I purposely didn't shave for a while. I don't think I showered for another few days, just to look as gross and grimy and everything as I could. A lot of news stories have a narration component to it, so I needed a voiceover. The person who did the voiceover actually didn't know what it was for. I just told them it was a funny inside joke thing, and they did the script, and I paid them. Neighbors tell 10TV they never noticed anything suspicious about this house, but police say it was a meth lab and stash house. In the news story, authorities found $13,000 of cash, with 28 pounds of crystal meth worth $100,000, and that I was being held on a $3 million bond, and that I was the mastermind behind it all. All that needed to be done is that it needed to be shared. 
and I couldn't share it because obviously I'm in prison, quote unquote. So I needed to confine with a, a few friends to share that link. It was posted on social media. I put my phone on silent and just went to bed. Figured, well, I'll just wake up the next morning and see what the damage was. It's like two o'clock in the morning and I get a frantic call from my sister, which is Josh's other aunt. She's like, Jen, you need to watch this. It's a newscast about Josh. So I'm looking at Facebook. I mean, I was just like, what the fuck? I saw his mugshot and I was like, oh my God. Oh, oh my God, that's my nephew. That's my nephew. I was watching it while I was on the phone with her. I was like, I can't believe he did this. You know, I can't believe he did this to his mother. First I was mad, I was yelling, but then we started crying. All I could think is like, what do we do now? We get on a three-way phone conversation with Josh's mom, woke her up two o'clock in the morning. We're like, well, your, your son's in prison. And she's like, what? And then everything went silent. We told her why. We told her that he's been charged with making meth in charge of one of the biggest drug rings in Ohio. She was devastated. Her voice was weak, tired. You can hear her crying. She was up that whole night. Yeah, I woke up and I roll over and look at my phone and it's just exploding. Just constant barrages of you know messages and phone calls. I saw upwards of about 100 missed calls and at least like 50 different messages. Most of them just wondering, did this happen? Are you okay? The very next thing I did is I hopped on Facebook real quick and I see literally a thousand notifications that I have. You know, people tagging me. And then that's when I realized everyone was sharing. It was just all over the news feed. And at that moment, I thought, uh-oh, this, this may have gone too far. So I woke up, immediately rolled over, checked my phone, and instantly the first thing I saw was a post about how my friend was in jail and had been secretly running this whole meth ring. There was his face in a mugshot, and he looked all disheveled, like he had just been inhaling chemicals for three days on some big cook or something like that. Pictures of his house with police tape and images of the basement that we could never go down to. It was just stunning. It was something we had joked about so much, and he was just laying these breadcrumbs for us the entire time. I think everything was fitting in its place. He quit the power company. He doesn't have a job, but he's making money. Where's he getting this money? I could see him in a suit in his basement with a big old chemistry set and thinking, yeah, he could probably pull this stuff off. I think he was living through that series of Breaking Bad. Thinking about it throughout the day, the image of cops finding him and grabbing him, handcuffing him, throwing him in the cop car, and then him sitting at the end of the day, hopefully wallowing in his self-pity or something, you know, in a jail cell in an orange jumpsuit. I'm thinking, he's been in my home. I've been in his home. I haven't seen the whole house watching and I was like, there's no way. All that time, we were joking about him being some kind of crazy meth kingpin, and he really is? Have I been this close to danger my whole life? I had no idea. The video about Josh had, had definitely had spread really quickly amongst the friend circles on Facebook that night. However, by the next day, it had gone way outside of that. There was a large variety of comments, people who said, I always knew he's a weird, strange guy, so you know maybe he deserves this. Other people kind of defended it, saying, you shouldn't immediately judge people by the news, and there's always more to the story. You know, maybe there's just desperate measures, and maybe times were tough, and so he just did what he knew how to do. And I was a complete fly on the wall, as far as everyone knew, and they thought I was just gone forever. So I could see a lot of what people thought about me without their filters, both good and bad. The fake news article of me getting busted for meth was shared about a little over 20,000 times that day. By that point, I had took a break and I thought, okay, well, I need to call my mom. Like, if it's really like this viral, then she deserves a no. So I call my mom. She picks up pretty quickly. And I tell her, you know, that you may have seen something on Facebook. And she gives me the, uh-huh, that, you know, it's not true. It was a short conversation. Her tone said it all. She obviously didn't want to talk to me that long. I had that feeling as when you're a kid and you've done something wrong, you know you're grounded, basically. And it had been a long time since I had that feeling. I thought the prank was finished, but it was about four o'clock when I got the email from the senior vice president over at 10TV wanting to have a chat with me. It's a short email. It's only a couple sentences long. He just says, I've seen the website and I want to 
have a conversation with you. Shortly after that, I did get a formal cease and desist order. More or less just said, you need to take down the website, take down the video. But then he requests that I transfer over the domain that the website was hosted at. And knowing that there's a 60 day lock period to be able to transfer that domain to him, I knew there was no way I could give them that domain until that transfer lock had expired. You know, I said to him, I can't transfer the domain. There's a 60 day lock period. And then that's when the tone changes to rather threatening. One of his last emails was that you have two options. One, you can give them the domain, or two, that they would sue me for damages up to $150,000 if they didn't get their domain by five o'clock that day. I'm sure that scared the crap out of him. That's a lot of money. He was seeking attorneys. I would have died. I mean, that's unbelievable to have one of the biggest news stations in central Ohio coming after you saying, we're seeking $150,000. I mean, that's a serious case you got against yourself, man. The very first time that I decided to come clean with the prank, I did it earlier than I expected. And I wanted to have the entire day to let this prank kind of run wild. But I was getting so many, you know, different messages and there was just so much activity. I thought, okay, well, maybe it's about time to, to come clean. Around five or six is when he finally came out that, yeah, this, this was all a joke, guys. <laughs> finally, I, I started to relax a little bit. I was like, this is not real. This is the most masterful prank I have ever seen. That's the worst joke I've ever heard in my life. That's not even close to being funny. I mean, that is seriously the worst of the worst. You just, that's, that's not funny at all. I'm waiting for this $150,000 lawsuit. So I'd been assuming that the paper's gonna hit my door. After a few months, I eventually did get the domain. I think I'd figure by that point, if there was gonna be a lawsuit, it would've happened by that point. So in a way, once that domain was taken away from me, I celebrated. Because for me, the prank was officially over four months later after it had done its thing. Even to this day, my family asked me, well, why did you do this? Don't you have something better to do with your life? He is a genius. He's very, very smart, but he has no common sense. I was actually pissed for a while and eventually talked about it and was able to mend things. I forgave him. That's just because I found out it really wasn't for family to know about anyway. Yeah, when it comes to pranks, it's one of the things where you can't predict precisely what's going to happen, how far it's going to reach. So just know that at some point you have to come clean, you have to face the consequences with it. At the end of the day, I still feel very proud about that prank, even if they're a little bit sore. My mom would smack me in the head right now. 